Knock a job application and screening questionnaire out of the park. My name is Charles Thal, and I'll be your instructor um, for this asynchronous session. Okay, so let's take a look at our workshop outline. We'll go ahead and begin with the guiding questions. And then we'll talk about vocabulary. Um, we'll briefly touch base on how to develop a resume. Um, and then we'll jump into the tips and advice for completing a job application and completing a screening questionnaire. And then we'll wrap up with a review. So guiding questions. Because this is an asynchronous activity, I would encourage you to reflect on these questions. First, what is a job application used for? How are resumes and job applications similar? What is an employment screening questionnaire? So let's take a look at some answers. What is a job application used for? Job applications help you share your information with an employer and they let them know that you would like to apply for a job. How are resumes and job applications similar? Will both have your contact information, your skills and education information, and your references. And both can be used to apply for a job. What is a screening, what is an employment screening questionnaire? This is where you answer questions about your skills and your personal qualities and employers try to figure out if you have skills that are needed for a certain job. Before we talk about how to complete a job application, let's first think about the vocabulary. Demographic information. Demographic information is needed to complete a job application. This includes your full name, your address, a phone number, and an email. When providing an email, please be sure to provide a personal or professional email address. Your availability. These are the days that you can work throughout the week. And this also includes a total amount of hours that you can work each week. Your work history. This includes the previous jobs that you've had. Those could be paid jobs and can also include volunteer work. Education history, that's going to include the location and dates and information about your education. Because you're still in high school, then of course it's talking about the high school that you're in now. References, those are going to be people that can confirm your abilities for work. Those can be people those can be a um, manager at a job that you're currently at. It can be a coach, a teacher, or a counselor. Acknowledgements. There's a part of a job application where the employer is going to ask you to um, provide your permission. Permission to review your work information and permission to check your references. An important part of applying for a job is having a resume. Here are some resources for developing your own resume. The first step here is to identify the skills that you have. Even if you do not have previous work experience, you can create a resume that focuses on your skills. These hyperlinks will give you some ideas to think about 
as far as which skills you have. There are hard skills and soft skills. Soft skills are the skills that you have that are part of your personality. Adaptable, efficient, enthusiastic, outgoing, patient, honest. These are all skills that people could naturally have, but could be harder to learn through education or to learn through employment. Hard skills are skills that are needed for a certain type of job. And hard skills are learned through, through education and training and employment. Hard skills such as answering phones, preparing food, handling money, keeping records, taking orders. Those are all good examples of hard skills. It's also a skills checklist. Um, this document is provided by Career One Stop. This is, these are a list of hard and soft skills, but by reviewing this information, it can help you determine the skills that you have. After reviewing the skills information, you could take note on which skills you believe match you best. It would be helpful to identify five to 10 skills. The next step is to create a resume. This hyperlink here will bring us to indeed.com and it, they provide a useful tool for developing a resume. You want to begin by choosing a template. You could choose simple select this template. Then you could choose which sections to include. By clicking on sections, you can open or close certain sections so the resume will fit you best. If you choose not to have a professional summary, that's fine. If you do not have previous work experience yet, that's fine too. So now you can put in the information here your contact information, your name, your location, your phone number, and email. Again, please use a professional email address. And then you can add the skills here. So the skills that you have identified, you can add here. And then finally, your education information. The high school that you are going to when you um, are planning to graduate or exit from high school and then the location of that school. When you're done adding your information, you can click on the download resume. That will download it as a PDF file. You can open this document. Mine is blank because I did not add information. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, with yours, it'll have information there, and then you can press the download icon here and store it to your laptop. Creating a resume is an important step because it'll help you apply for jobs. So now let's take a look at some advice for completing a job application. My first advice is to be sure to create a digital resume that's going to make it easier to apply for jobs online. When you apply for jobs online, it'll allow you to upload the resume. And it'll add your information in even faster. My next tip is to visit the company website that you would like to work at. For example, in a moment, I will take us to the Home Depot website and that's the location that I'll provide you all with a demonstration on, on, on how to complete a job application. The next step is to find the job that fits you best. So before you apply for a job, be sure the job is close to your home or that you have reliable transportation to and from the job. 
and also really take a close look at the requirements for the job. Does the job have an age requirement or an education requirement? Does the job have the hours that are going to fit you best? And then finally, take a very close look at the skills that are required for the job. And be sure that you're comfortable doing every part of, of that job, because if you, if you are offered employment, then that'll be the expectation. The next part is to choose to apply. So after figuring out if that job is going to fit you best, and that's where you would like to have a part-time job at, then you could choose to apply. Follow the steps that the employer provides. You may have to create a login, and then you'll probably be prompted to upload a copy of your resume. If needed, you can copy and paste information as well. Please complete your job application carefully. Make sure the information is accurate and complete. Employers may not process or consider your application if your application is incomplete or if there's information that is not correct. Be honest with all the information that you provide. That's very important. If an employer offers you a job and they find that some of the information in your application um, is not true, then they may let you go. And finally, be ready to contact the employer. When you complete a job application, the next step is the employer may contact you or if you really would like to have that part-time job, then you'll have to contact the employer. And you would be contacting the employer to request a job interview. So let's move on and take a look at an online job application. Okay, this is a job application for Home Depot. I began my search by looking for the Home Depot website with the job information. I would like to apply for a job as a lot associate. Home Depot is helpful because they do provide a useful video here. And they also provide information and the description of the job. I'm going to pause here for just a moment. Before you apply for a job, it's super important to make sure you're comfortable with the work tasks that are being asked of you. So I advise you to carefully read the description of the job to make sure it's a job that you can do well and it's a job that you can learn. It's okay if, if these skills um, are new for you, but it's important that you're comfortable in that environment and that you're comfortable learning those skills. So a lot associated with Home Depot. I'll be assisting customers and loading their vehicles. And I'll also be keeping an eye on the front of the store. I'm also responsible for keeping the carts in a certain area and interacting with coworkers and customers. It's really important that I'm comfortable moving around, being active, keep, keep keeping track of the things in my work environment. And then also it's important that I'm comfortable interacting with customers. So if that's a good fit, then I could choose to apply. It's also useful to take a look at the benefits of the job and, the, and, and any extra information. Oh, 
Okay, this is my first time completing a Home Depot application. So I need to create an account. The website is directing me to enter in an email address. This should be a personal email address and not your school email. Your school email cannot accept emails from outside of school, so it needs to be a personal and professional email address. You need to create a password. It's important to notice the information there. The password has to be set a certain way. And then you need to re-enter the password to make sure that they match. Tom Depot is also giving you a chance to create a security question for your application account. So start your application. Estimate a time 8 to 10 minutes. That's important. You want to make sure that you have enough time to complete your application. Also notice right away that at the bottom it says save and finish later. That means that if I had to leave or take a break, that's fine. I could choose the option to save and come back to it. So this first part here is straightforward. It's just saying thank you. We appreciate your interest. Um, if you require accommodations, there's a process for that. And then in all caps here, it says this application does not create a contract for employment. So that's saying by filling out this application, that does not mean that Home Depot is going to hire me. It just means I'm going to let the employer know that I'm interested in working there. It also gives us a status bar. First question, Home Depot Associates, are you currently employed? No, I'm not employed by Home Depot. Next question, are you 16 years old, legally eligible to work in the US, and are you willing to complete a drug test if offered employment? I would need to answer yes to that question. Okay, demographic information, my name, my address. Here's the part where having a resume comes in handy. Import profile. This is going to allow me to bring in my resume information. I can save on time. Good to know where your resume is. So I created a folder for it. This is a resume that I created that I could have had in high school. Your profile has been updated. If I scroll down, you'll see that my information has been added. I have my first name, my last name, the country I'm in, the city and state. I do need to carefully look and make sure I add information where it goes. So it does need the last four digits of my social security number. And it's also asking for my current address. So that's your street address and street name. Any box that has an asterisk, a red star, that means you have to put information there zip code and the phone number so again this is demographic information my contact information so home depot can contact me if they choose to offer me a job interview it's also important to make sure it's important to make sure that your information is accurate so double check that the information is correct. This next part is asking me to list three previous employers, up to three previous employers. And I would like to use the information from my resume. 
and save on time and save the, and save on accuracy. So I'm going to open up my resume again. And I can copy and paste the information over. I go to the part of my resume that has my experience. Fresh Fields, Grocery Store, and Heckinger Hardware Store. You should put your most recent experience first, if, if you have one. If you did not have work experience, then you can leave this section blank. My job title was courtesy clerk. The dates that I worked there, Home Depot would like to know. That lets them know where I've worked in the past and how long I worked there. Work experience number two, Heckinger Hardware Store. That's the employer name. And then my job title was store associate. It only allows a certain amount of letters, so I erase the part of front end. And also be sure to add the dates that I worked there. And I'm careful to do this correctly. I did not have a third work experience, so I can leave that blank. Save and continue. This next section is asking me about my work preferences. It's letting me know that the, most of the jobs at Tom Depot are part-time. And then it's going to ask me about my availability. We talked about that earlier. Availability is the days that you can work each week the total amount of hours. So the first question, am I available to work weekdays? Am I available to work on Saturdays? In a retail job, having a good availability can help you become hired. So I'm being flexible and I'm choosing yes. Now it's asking me, when can I work? What part of the day? Well, I can work in the mornings, on the weekends, and then the afternoons and evenings during the week. Early a.m., late night, and overnight uh, do not fit my schedule. Save and continue. I'm about halfway through the application. Additional information. Home Depot is interested to know if I speak any other languages or if I have served in the military. They'd also like to know how I heard about this application. I saw it on Home Depot's website. Save and continue. Home Depot is letting me know that they cannot just discriminate against me. They will hire anyone that is qualified for the job. And they're also going to ask you about more information about your demographics. They're asking me about my gender. Save and continue. This section is asking about a work opportunity tax credit. This does not apply for me. I, I select no. Save and continue. 
This is the last part of the application. This is the acknowledgement, the acknowledgement section. <laughs> we talked about that earlier when we reviewed vocabulary. Acknowledgements are, is information that you're going to give the company a permission, and you're also certifying certain things. There's a lot of information here, so I will paraphrase. This first paragraph is saying that I provided information that is honest. Everything in my application is as true as it can be. And if Home Depot finds out that I was not being honest, then they can terminate my application or even terminate my employment. This long paragraph here, this is talking about how if I am employed at Home Depot, that I can quit at any time, and Home Depot can fire me at any time. And that's just how the law in Virginia is set up. So going on to the third paragraph here, this paragraph is, I'm giving permission to Home Depot to investigate my application. I'm allowing them to contact my references. References again are the people that can confirm that I am um, that I have the work skills that are necessary for work. And I'm also giving them permission to investigate my work experience. The very last paragraph is talking about how I understand that this application is just the first step in employment. This application does not obligate Home, Home Depot to hire me. It's just the first step. I'm letting Home Depot know that I would like to apply for a job. It's also repeating the information that if I am offered employment, that they would ask me to complete a drug test and that's part of their pre-employment process as well this fifth paragraph here believe it or not there is more I am giving Home Depot for permission to contact me through emails calls or text messaging. And then finally, by submitting this application, I am expressing interest in a job. And Home Depot can contact me and offer me the job that I applied to, but they also can contact me and offer me other jobs that they think could be a good fit for me. So as you can see, this is also an important part of the application process. There's other information here that has to do with other states. It is important to look through to make sure that you do not see the state that you live in. I saved and continued. This very last step here is when you would review your application to make sure that everything is accurate. You want to be sure that your application is complete, the information is true, and that the information that you provided matches what fits for you. Make sure that the availability, the hours that you said that you can work, that matches you as well. Then the very last step is to send my application. So by selecting that icon, you will submit your application. So now let's move on. We've talked about how to complete an application. And quite often, the second part of the application process, the employer will ask you to complete a job screening questionnaire. What is this for? This process is the employer is trying to figure out the best person for the job. 
and trying to figure out the best person that they can offer a interview to. Screening questions, they're going to ask you about your work skills, your personal qualities, problem solving skills, and social skills. Typically, after completing a job application, the employer will send you a link to complete a screening questionnaire. This isn't always the case, but it does happen often, so you should be prepared. So what do screening questions look like? Most often, a questionnaire is going to use what's called a five-point scale. It will ask you a question, and then you'll have to rate that question. For example, I am polite to others. One is strongly a disagree, and five is strongly agree. How would you answer this question? Why? Let's talk about tips for completing a screening questionnaire. First, set aside the time that is needed to complete the questionnaire. Sometimes these questionnaires will take 10 or 15 minutes, and other times they could take 45 minutes to an hour. So make sure that you have a time available before you begin. It's very important to read the directions and each question carefully. You want to make sure you understand what the question is going to ask, and then you want to make sure that you indicate how you feel the correct way. It's really important to think about the job that you're applying to. And try to anticipate what the employer is looking for. For example, you could apply for a job to be a cashier at a restaurant. The employer could give you a questionnaire. The question could include, it's sometimes okay to be rude to customers. For this type of question, I would say strongly disagree because that's what the employer needs. They need employees that are going to be always polite and respectful. Let's take a look at an example job application screening questionnaire. So job application screening questionnaire. Read each question carefully and mark your answer. Most people are really honest. I agree. Most customers only argue over important issues. I agree. Most people want to be polite. I get angry quickly when dealing with annoying people. I strongly disagree. Or I disagree. It's important to get along with people when you're in a place of employment. I support the position that the customer is always right. I agree. If you're providing customer service, then the customer should come first as best as possible. I think most people are really good at heart. That sounds reasonable. I agree. If I know I am right, I will argue to get my point across. I disagree. Employers do not want you to argue. People who know me well say I'm easy to get along with. I agree. Employers need people that are going to get along with others and have a positive attitude. People who know me well say I'm very responsible. I definitely agree. Employers need you to be responsible, to show up and be reliable for your job. 
Sometimes I get really mad, but taking a 15 minute break helps me calm down. I'm neutral on this one. I'm not sure if I get mad. <laughs> when my friends come to see me on the job, it's not a big deal to talk with them if the store is empty. I disagree. Employers need you to have initiative and to keep yourself occupied at work. When I finish a task given, given to me by my supervisor, I wait till he or she comes by to tell me what to do next. I disagree. Again, it's important to have initiative and to be prepared to keep yourself busy. When, treat, when people treat me with respect, I treat them with respect. If people are rude, then I'm rude back because they set the tone. I disagree. When you're working at a place of employment, you always have to be as polite as you can be and respectful. Even if a customer is being rude, as the employee, you have to be polite and positive. If you need help in that situation, you could find a coworker or you could find a manager. Next question. If my supervisor is cool and laid back, I can slack off and it won't be a big deal. I disagree. You're being paid to do a certain job. It's very important that you're having a strong work ethic and doing the best that you can each day, even if there's co-workers that, that are not working like you. Next question. If I'm hired to run the, the cash register, I'm not going to wipe the tables or clean the bathrooms. That is not my job. I disagree. It's very important to be flexible and to help out as best as you can. Sometimes when you have a job, you'll be asked to do things that you do not prefer. But that's part of the job. It's important to ask these types of questions during the application process or during a interview. You can ask the employer, what type of job is this? What do I have to do each shift? And if you were hired to take care of things like being a cash register and cleaning every now and then, then it's important to take care of those things. Next question. Most people have high expectations for me and I enjoy the challenge. I agree. It's important to have high expectations for yourself and to work hard. If I saw a coworker take money, but she explained that she just needed it to purchase formula and would put the money back the next day, I would not say anything about it to the supervisor. I disagree. Although you may feel bad that your, that your co-worker is in need, it's important to be honest and your supervisor would expect you to report any theft that you see at the business. If it was me, I would offer my coworker a small amount of money. I would say, sure, you know, I can buy the formula for you and you can pay me back. Let's make sure we're being honest with our employer. So this was a good example of a questionnaire. When you're complete with it, you would need to press submit. So let's review. If you're going to apply for a job, that's fantastic. One of the first steps that you can take is to create a digital resume. That's a resume that you store on a computer. And that's useful because it'll help you apply for a job and also help you keep track of the information that you need to apply for a job. It's also really important to apply for jobs that fit you best. It's really important that you are going into an environment that you feel like you're going to enjoy, an environment that you're going to be successful in. There are ways that you can explore this more. You could take a the My Next Move ONET interest inventory, and then you can identify the work environments that you could prefer. If 
you prefer a job where you're working with your hands and using tools, then you could apply. Then as a high school student, you, you could apply for a job as a dishwasher. If you prefer a job that allows you to be social, to talk with people more to, and, and to interact, then you could consider employment as a cashier or a server. If you are interested in the enterprising work environment, you could consider jobs where they allow you to lead others and persuade. You could possibly work as a salesperson. Just be very sure that you read the description of the job and make sure that that job is going to be a great fit for you. When you found a job that's going to fit you best, carefully complete the job application. Carefully complete the screening questionnaire. This is a very important point. To be considered for employment, your application has to be complete and accurate and it has to look professional. So if you do want to have the opportunity to have a job interview, then it's very important that you complete your application and questionnaire in a professional way. When you're completing your application, and especially when you're completing your screening questionnaire, it's really important to think about the type of job that you're applying to and the type of employee the employer is looking for. You want to make sure that if you're applying for a job in customer service, you're always going to be polite and respectful and helpful to other people. And all employers are looking for honest employees. So it's very important to be the person that the employer is looking for. And finally, if you need help with job applications or questionnaires, please ask a teacher or please ask your the employment and transition representative at your high school. Lastly, here are some resources that can help you learn more. If you'd like to learn more about the specific work environments that could fit you best, I would encourage you to check out the My Next Move website where you could complete the ONET interest inventory. After completing this inventory, you, you'll learn which work environments fit you best and then you can also review jobs that, that you can apply for now. Review ones that require little to no preparation. Those are jobs that you can apply for while you're still in high school. You can also review jobs that require preparation. And those are jobs or careers that you can pursue after high school that may require post-secondary education or training. Next, you could check out these videos. I have, I have several videos that provide some great advice on how to create a resume and also have some fantastic videos on how to learn more about job skills. Checking out these videos can be helpful. A resume is always a draft. So the more that you can learn, you can always update your resume over time and make it better and better. I would also encourage you to really think about learning more about job skills and the types of skills that you'll need for employment. It's one thing to look for a part-time job and to get a part-time job, but it's something else to do well there. So learning more about the skills that employers are looking for can be very helpful. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all about how to complete job applications.